Mercy Church Motorcycle Ministries presents The Spoken Cross, a time of music, prayer, and reflection upon the Holy Word of God. I'm Pastor Terry Tile. Join me, won't you, as we explore God's Word to unlock the many promises that He has for each and every one of our lives. Yes, he just has so many wonderful blessings in store for us, doesn't he? Pastor Terry here, just excited to be bringing you another edition of the Spoken Cross. Before we dive into the program, let's pause for this word from Mercy Church Motorcycle Ministries. Have you been searching for a place to worship that's as unique and individual as you are? Hi, I'm Terry Tile, pastor and president of Mercy Church Motorcycle Ministries urging you to come and worship with us Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. 721 South 1st in the Old Fast Lane building in Abilene. Mercy Church Motorcycle Ministries. Experience the difference Jesus makes. What a difference he makes indeed. Well, moving into the, uh, before we move into the musical portion of our program, let's just have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just worship you and we give you thanks and praise for all that you're doing, Lord God, in our lives and the lives of those around us. We ask you to bless the music and the message in this program, Lord, and let it be effective, Lord God. Let it plant seed in people's hearts, Lord Jesus. And we just pray this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Well, folks, it is my pleasure to share a song with you that uh, we had the pleasure of performing This past Friday night at the Abilene Praise and Worship Music Festival, we just had an absolutely wonderful time, a lot of wonderful music, and uh, uh, this is a sneak peek, if you will, at uh, some of the, uh, one of the songs that we performed. This is a rewrite of an old Allman Brothers tune that we did. Uh, We call it One Way In. Right here on the Spoken Cross. This is one I rewrote. Uh, in fact, I just did it this morning in the shower. Okay, so so bear with me. Jesus. 
is your sinful savior. I ain't in darkness anymore. Hey, but one way in, people. And now Jesus is the only way. in the dark now. I said you ain't gonna live in the dark now. Oh, it ain't gonna be dark no more. Oh, Jesus. Amen. That's one way in. We had a lot of fun with that at the Abilene Praise and Worship Music Festival. There's going to be a lot more music coming from that uh, concert as well. We had a really good time, uh, not only in our performance. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Steve Couch, by the way, for sitting in with us on keys. That was just truly awesome getting to play with him and uh, getting to listen to some of the other fine praise teams that were there. Well, brothers and sisters, let's move on into the biblical portion of our program. The first scripture reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 7, starting at verse 13. Romans 7, 13 through 25. That's Romans 7, 13 through 25. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. The second scriptural reading is going to be real easy to find because it's Romans 8, verses 1 through 11. Romans 8, 1 through 11. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God, sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, 
for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Amen. The body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Amen. Before we dive into this, folks, let's just pause for a word of prayer. Most great and glorious God, we worship you. We give you thanks and praise. We just ask you, Lord God, to touch the lips of the messenger and the ears of those to hear the message, Lord God, that seed be sown, Lord God, and that it be effective, Lord God. And we just pray this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I would like to talk to you today about one of the most relevant subjects, at least for me, in my Christian life, and that is the battle between my ears, the battle of the brain, amen? What goes on, you know, sometimes I find I am my own worst enemy, as they say. And in the scriptural readings that we have today, Paul is talking about the responsibility of the burden of sin or the bondage to sin. Amen. In the verses that precede what we read, he makes the point that before he was aware of the law, he was not responsible for the knowledge of the law. You know, for example, you don't punish a baby because it has a dirty diaper. Amen. The baby doesn't know any better. Now, if your nine-year-old willingly soils his pants, you've got another issue there. And he is res held responsible for that because he knows better. And the same is true, Paul says, for the law. He says, until I knew the law, until the law taught me not to covet or not to steal, I didn't know any better. And Paul goes on to say, so therefore is the law bad because it, it made me guilty? God forbid. The law is holy. In fact, the law existed simply because of the evil nature of humanity. And because of that very nature, humanity was unable to live up to the law simply because in our flesh there is no good thing. I know, Paul says, that in my flesh dwells no good thing. This is Paul talking, brothers and sisters, a man who was beat for the gospel's sake, a man who was put in prison for the gospel's sake. But he knew where he came from. He knew that he had been a murderer of Christians. He knew where the Lord pulled him out of, amen? And he, know, he states that in my flesh, within me, that is, without Jesus Christ, there is no good thing. You see, many times we talk about our spiritual walk or in our relationship with Jesus Christ as a battle. We wage spiritual warfare. Well, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that we are waging a battle, and it is not only a battle against the enemy at work in the world. It is not only a battle to save, to see others save, but it is a battle to maintain our own spiritual man. You see, within each and every one of us are two natures. There is the spiritual man or woman, and there is the carnal man or woman. And we cannot get away from that, folks. 
That is why the law was put into to, to being in the first place. That's why Jesus Christ came and sacrificed and rose again on the third day to fulfill the law because of that very nature. And so Paul says, the evil that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Those things that I would not, I end up doing. No matter how hard I try to be spiritual, I find that to will is present with me. Paul says worse than that. He says that the, the good that I want to do, I don't do. You see, the winner of the battle between our flesh and our spiritual man is going to be determined by which one we feed the most. The more we feed one, the stronger it is going to grow. And I, 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 I will put it to you this way. The more time you feed one man, the harder it becomes to feed the other. The more you give one, the harder it becomes to give to the other. If we continually give to our spirit man and we begin to build up our, our spiritual man, then it becomes easier for us to hold the physical man or the flesh man at bay. Amen? I, I tell you that until the day of perfection, we are never going to be rid of the, the flesh man. Until the day when we are no longer flesh ourselves, we are not going to be free of that man. However, we can hold him in bondage. I, in fact, I put it to you that we either hold him in bondage or he holds us in bondage. Because if we do not feed the spirit man, the flesh man will rule. And I want you to understand that the flesh has no consequences because when this life is said and done, the flesh is going to decay and it's going to go back to ashes from whence it came. But the spirit will live on regardless of whether we live for the flesh or whether we live for the spirit. If we live for the flesh, the spirit will live on in torment and eternal agony. But if we live for the spirit... The Bible says there is now no condemnation for those that walk in the Spirit. Amen? If we live by the Spirit and if we feed the spiritual man to the point where he is able to battle the fleshly man and to, to be able to maintain that victory over the flesh man, then there is no condemnation for us because we live in the spirit and the bible says that those that live in the spirit will seek the things of the spirit the bible says that the carnal mind is enmity with god brothers and sisters i do not want to be an enemy of god amen I do not want enmity between me and God. I want us to have a loving relationship. I want to be able to call him Abba, Father. And one of the greatest weapons of the devil, one of the greatest lies that he will tell a child of God is that they cannot have a relationship with God because they battle with a particular weakness or there is some sin in their life that they are battling. I want you to know that you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Just because you're battling with something does not mean that you can't come to him for forgiveness. It does not mean that you can't come to him for guidance to, to gain victory over that. Amen? In fact, if that's the case, you should come to him. More than anything, when you're battling something, that is the time to come to church. People say, oh, I can't come to church because I'm dealing with cigarettes or I'm dealing with alcohol or I'm dealing with 
pornography or I have a drug problem. I can't come to church because of those things. That is the biggest lie from the devil. And what that does, you see, is it separates you from your spirit man so that you begin to neglect the spirit man and feed the flesh man. And the more you feed the flesh man, the stronger the flesh man becomes, and he becomes victorious over the spiritual man. And the Bible teaches us that the wages of sin is death. But a relationship with Jesus Christ is peace and joy and eternal life. And brothers and sisters, if you do not have that, you can have it right now. Don't let your condition keep you away from it. Don't let your addictions keep you away from it. Don't let your pride keep you away from it. Don't let someone else's opinion keep you away from a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's as simple as asking him into your heart. Would you bow your head and pray with me? Would you ask him into your heart? Lord God, I just admit right now that you are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And I need you to come into my heart to touch me, Lord God, to change my thoughts and my ways from this day forward, Lord God, to make of me a new person, a new body, a new creation. Lord God, I confess my sins to you and ask for forgiveness in Jesus' precious and holy and exalted name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you prayed that prayer with me, you have embarked upon a brand new journey. If you have rededicated your life, then you have started again on a, on a brand new journey. Love the Lord. Read his word and meditate upon it. Most importantly, pray to him for guidance to help you be the best, strongest Christian that you can be. Amen? Amen. Well, moving back, uh, before we move into the music now, let's just pause for this message from Mercy Church Motorcycle Ministries. Come and celebrate the awesome and life-changing power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in an atmosphere of reverence and the perfect law of liberty. Hi, I'm Terry Tile pastor and president of Mercy Church Motorcycle Ministries, urging you to come and worship with us Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., 721 South 1st in Abilene. Mercy Church Motorcycle Ministries, come as you are and give God the glory. Praise God. Yes, the Lord's doing just all kinds of really wonderful and awesome things at Mercy Church, and we'd love for you to be a part of it. Moving right along, folks, I'd like to play another song. Speaking of the fun that we've had with Mercy Church, this is another song that we performed at the Abilene Praise and Worship Music Festival. It's one of our own. It's called Salvation's Shield right here on the Spoken Cross.
sky was cloudy and dark. The night the veil was rent in two. No more need for the Holy of Holies. Salvation's work was due. So that a world like such as me could come to know Jesus. Give the Lord a hand clap of 